Hi guys, welcome to the Simple Doesn't Mean Easy podcast. We are here Mondays and Fridays working at simplifying things in our lives one day at a time, one simple step at a time. I'm your host, Michelle Visser, and today I'm bringing on two really fun ladies. It was fun to chat with them, and they actually run a really unique, amazing candle company. So I asked them to come on to help us understand as consumers when we should make sure we do not purchase, literally run from a candle because it is toxic, and then how to choose the better ones and ideally the best ones. And stick with us to the end because (laughs) they give me some insight that I literally, I was joking with them, but I was kind of (laughs) serious. If that was the only thing I gained from this episode, I would have done it again 10 different times over because it was it was like an eye-opening, really fun insight. So you're going to like this episode. But they also talk about entrepreneurship and they give us some really great tips and encouragement if that's something that you're considering maybe adding to your days to try to be an entrepreneur or if you are an entrepreneur, they give us some encouragement about that too. Um, if you go to solelyrested.com slash create, I think you will like a a very brief, intense though, e-course that I offer to help you if you have questions about being an online content creator to grow a brand or a business. So go to solelyrested.com slash create for that. And as far as the whole idea of small business, I know that you guys value small business. I mean, we know it's, it's like the backbone of our nation. And I honestly believe that giving business to a small business is truly the only way to really know the source of what I'm buying and to really know that I'm getting the good stuff. And bonus, I love it that I'm supporting someone that I know. There's like a face behind the product that I'm buying, right? And I love that, that I'm supporting them and I can trust them. Well, I introduced you to Tyler and Taylor Real a few episodes ago and told you about their small family farm. They actually are sponsors of this episode. And I wanted to share with you um, something more about them. They actually, they have a lot in common with the ladies that are on today. And I love it that they're raising high quality, nutrient rich beef that you can trust and you can feel confident feeding your family. You can do a big bulk bulk beef share. You can do a small bulk beef share (laughs) and there's no mystery. They tell you exactly what's coming in your box. There's no hassle of a subscription that you need to think about canceling. And there's no concern over what's for dinner because you can stock your freezer with really good stuff. But if you're not ready to commit to a beef share, you can try a sample box. They're giving a special offer to our, to my followers. If you go to solelyrested.com slash beef, You can find out about that special offer and the beef shares and meet Tyler and Taylor. So definitely go solelyrested.com slash beef. But what I wanted to tell you in addition about them before we bring on our guest today is that Tyler and Taylor have figured out something I can't even imagine. I don't know how they've done it. It's really crazy, but they've figured out a way to offer you free shipping when you're buying their beef. I actually didn't know it could be done. Um, I have some connection with another ranch that does this similar thing. And I know the cost of shipping. I know it's insane buying the dry ice, that intense package, that box that's insulated, and then the different components of the insulation to keep this beef really cold and really good until it gets to you. So it is not a small effort. It's a huge one that they have gone to to make sure they can offer you this high quality beef and even ship it at no cost to you. So please go check out solelyrested.com slash beef. Go meet Taylor and Tyler and tell them that I said hi and that I sent you. So I'm excited today to have two sisters on with me. They run an amazing mom run business. I recently, just recently met them because I fell in love with their products And I asked them if they would like to come on and help us work through some things about candles, because it is an area that I am not knowledgeable at all. Um, 
And recently, well, not too recently, a while back, I did an episode about toxic things in our home. And I didn't even talk about candles because I don't even understand what makes a candle toxic and not. But I love candles. So when Lydia and Allie told me they would come on and we could talk about this stuff, I got very excited. So thank you, ladies, for being here. Introduce yourselves. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. Michelle, we're so happy that you're doing this with us. It's really fun to be here and talk about candles. My name is Allie, and I am part of this awesome candle company, and this is my sister. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lydia. <laughs> um, yeah, so we are we both have three kids. I have, my youngest is eight months old, wow. um, and then a two and four-year-old. Yeah, and I have a four-year-old, a seven, and a ten-year-old. So we homeschool okay. and um, we just kind of bring our kids together for play dates and we do nap time here and we do lunches and we pour candles. And so it's just kind of a cool thing that we can incorporate um, within our family. And our kids are all well versed in the, the, the candle, candle business yes. and can, <laughs> candle days. And um, just I'm when sure. we're passing around candles for how's this smell? What do you think about this? Like yeah. bringing them to family dinners. It's just kind of a family event. So <laughs> it's been really yeah. fun for sure. And I bet Lydia, your oldest ones are actually understanding the entrepreneurial side of it too. And they're starting, even if you don't realize it, they're starting to understand, well, this is a good way to make money and I can have my own business someday. And you yeah, know, the definitely. Good yeah. yeah. Uh huh. We have a couple little businesses we're starting with them just to, it's a good homeschool project, really, like to learn Absolutely. economics and learn on, learn entrepreneurship. And it is a really, um, I think it's a good thing to implement into kids' lives and to see that. Absolutely. See the hustle and see that it's not just eight to five. It's, it's a different mindset for sure. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And to help them understand that, yes, money is important, but we can earn it in a way that doesn't necessarily detract from our family and we can still have yes. time together. 100, and for yeah. us, we homeschooled for 20 years. There's so much about you ladies that I like fell in love with instantly because I'm oh, a mom so of four cool. daughters. So to see two sisters who are working together so beautifully uh, makes, you know, my mom heart so happy. <laughs> and I homeschooled my daughters for 20 years. So when I heard that you also are homeschooling while you're running your business, I was like, I need to meet these ladies Aww. because I love so it. So awesome. Thank yeah. you. So, that's so cool how did you four choose? sisters as well? Are you we really up? You are? Yes. Oh, that is cool. <laughs> is there also a boy though? Yes, but we lost okay, him. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, oh, he's waiting for us. He's with Jesus. <laughs> so. Amen. Amen. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's also, I mean, when I heard that your name, I mean, tell us about your company, why you named it Be Rooted. Tell me about that. Yeah. Um, we were just trying to think of a name for it because we knew we wanted to do this yeah. and we we're just kind of hashing it out and all different options. And so then we came up with Be Rooted and we're like, oh yeah, like Be Rooted, that, that sounds good. And like, you know, not only like Be Rooted it just, there's so many aspects of it, you know, be rooted in your health. Like, we're like, yeah, that's good. And like, um, be rooted in family too, you know, being rooted in, in, um, in Christ is our biggest yep. point. Mm -hmm. And so it just all really flowed together. We yeah. thought like it's a multi, if you can just really think of being rooted and what are you rooted in? And so that to yes. us, it just was a really neat, uh, business mantra and, um, and way to make Christ like, yeah. Our Part of foundation, of absolutely, absolutely, business. and yeah, so absolutely. being rooted I in Christ, it. being rooted in your health. So yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and of course it's B E E rooted yeah, because yeah. of <laughs> course, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. So I love that you guys are part of a seventh generation bee farm. Tell me about that. Okay. So that was so awesome. Let's talk about that. <laughs> we started this whole thing, this whole business, um, and we have a friend who is actually, I think they figured out it was eighth generation. Anyways, way back mm -hmm. when, bee farmer, bee, bee uh, Keep, keeper. keeper, yeah. They have apiary. the apiary, yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so many, so many words, but yes. um, she's our, our friend. And it was just so neat to be a part of that and to know the process. And um, um, one of our business partners, Sarah, it was her friend as well. And it's actually her family. Yeah. So it's not our okay. family, but okay. Sarah had to actually exit because she's pregnant. And it was just 
too much, too much. I was for her. wondering. Sarah has yeah. long dark hair. Yes. I saw her on your Instagram, and yeah. I was wondering. I'm like, wait, there's three of them. I'm confused. There's, okay. I know. Yeah. So Lyd and I kept going, um, but she just felt like it was best for her. The season of her life, just yeah. she's dealing with like tons of morning sickness and low energy. Oh, you know, yeah. we all know that. So she yeah. just needed to um, be done. So we changed that. It's not really, it's no longer really our family because she was our family connection, but it is our friends. So okay, okay. <laughs> um, we still use all their wax. We buy Mm-hmm. pretty much all that they have so yeah um, <laughs> yeah I to... saw on Instagram when you went and picked up your latest load these yeah, giant that, bricks it is and we had to stretch out that's another Arizona um bee keeper keeper yeah um okay he we that's the first time we've had to buy pretty much a bulk order from anyone else wow. um wow. because she just didn't quite have enough for us and that's just how it goes I think with growth and I'm we're thankful for yeah. it but absolutely we'll buy, we'll buy and isn't you know, it a Hannah's fantastic next. feeling I mean my brand actually has just gotten to this point after 10 years it's a fantastic feeling to be able to have enough that you can help your family support your family but hire out or give business to someone else because you're buying that product right I think mm-hmm. like that's it's what we wanted to talk feeling. about too. Yeah. It really is because we really, um, we really appreciate the beekeepers, and we need bees. And I know everyone's kind of aware of the, the importance of bees and the pollination and how critical they are to our agriculture. Yeah. And um, yeah. so yeah. we're just really, it's fun to be able to see the process to meet the beekeepers. And they you, just work so hard. They beekeepers <laughs> like. They have a oh, hard man. job. And so, yeah, well, just being I tell able you to, what. like, buy their wax and, like, help out the a portal little bit, back. it's like, wow, thank yes. you. Uh-huh. Like, you guys do yes. the hard stuff. <laughs> I understand because here in New England, we live on a sugar bush. So our primary sugar that we raise is maple, but we also have an apiary. And mm. in New England, it's pretty much impossible to raise bees. I've decided that <laughs> it's really, really hard. I'm sure yeah. it's easier in Arizona, but yes, it's a hard job. And to think that you're supporting them yeah, and yet you're also running your own business. It's just great. I mean, it is so neat. It's the yeah, best it of the capitalistic society, you know, that <laughs> yeah. we're all interwoven and helping yeah. each other grow. It's fantastic. It is. It's yeah. really special. It's really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you choose this for your business? Or maybe, maybe that's obvious. Maybe I missed it on your Instagram. Like, how did you say, did you wake up one day and say, I really want to work with my sister and make candles every day? <laughs> no, I know. It's kind of weird how it really transpired, Holland. I feel like it was kind of like a conversation of can- like candles and how we love them, but they're so bad for you. And so, you know, beeswax, like, but then... I don't know. It was just like, what if we just tried to make our own beeswax? You're so and- naive too. It's <laughs> yeah. so funny looking back oh, on yeah. um, our ideas and like what we thought we would do. And Oh, um, yeah. We'll just pour some candles. And <laughs> How hard is it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It, but thank goodness, right? Because what would we ever do if we knew how hard it was going to be? It's so right? true. Yeah. It, it wouldn't probably, <laughs> true. probably wouldn't have happened really. Yeah. yeah. There's been a so lot in the beginning, were you struggles. just making them for yourselves? To have well, no, we non-toxic. always thought that we would do okay. a business, but it took a long time to sell the candle, obviously, mm-hmm. just yeah. months and months. We actually, I don't know, six to eight months, maybe, I don't know, of just testing different combinations, different jars, different wicks, different placements, just like all the things. And mm-hmm. um, I, we felt like we were met with a lot of failure. So <laughs> we just like yeah. try and encourage each other. <laughs> And um, yeah. just just keep going and keep trying. But we, at first, we were like, why don't we just like recycle jars? Like we could go to thrifts and like just buy different different jars there, and um, we could get them for cheaper and recycle. And and then later we're like, there's no way we could do that because you yeah. have to test each jar and each size and each placement. It's like. That was just blown yeah. out of the water. Yeah. And then we Great were Great idea to, at first. I but, mean, it would have been yeah. so cool. But yeah. And we yeah. were thinking, let's make the vessels. Let's make the jars. We'll make them really cool, like bowls out of concrete. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, Chalk on hours of work just oh, to make the, the... It was like, I got five bowls made today. And it's like, <laughs> oh, it was so We'll only have work. to charge $600 for this candle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
that. Oh no, yeah. And then yeah. we're like, oh no, the concrete, it's just retaining so much heat. And it's just all the things. And then wait a minute, how could we ever ship a concrete candle? Oh yeah, yeah. shipping. And then shipping uh, so seventy nine dollars. <laughs> yeah. And then like trying to find sealers, like low like VOC sealers and like, oh non toxic. Oh, what if it what if the flame, what if it gets too hot and lets off toxic fuel just like all the things were like, uh, this is not working. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so it's Anyways. come a long way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's cool to see the growth when we talk about like when we started, you're like, okay, like, yeah. wow, it did used to do that. doesn't do that yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah. That's really awesome. And I know the testing phase is awful. I know when I was writing my book, as far as like just testing the recipes, it's awful because you think, I'll remember this detail, but you don't. So you have to write down the details, you know, and then you have to keep them organized. And it's just not the way I like to cook. And it's probably not the way you'd really prefer to make candles, but you got to do it Uh, or you're not going to have a good end product. Yeah. Right. You're so spot on. (laughs) Yes. And isn't it funny? Because like we, us people like us, we're the creative people, right? We just want to make, but tag on it. We have to be technical too. And we have to keep the notes. And <laughs> that's what's been really hard is like, you know, you, we all, we have our strengths within a business, but it, you have to even work on your weaknesses. Cause when you're starting yeah. a business, it's not like you can just hire everything out. You're, you're, ev- you're doing every yeah. angle of it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So we found out where our weaknesses are, I think, but yeah. it's okay. We're working with it. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, I mean, that's something that I thought I was going to ask you guys today too, because I know in general, a lot of people who listen to my podcast are either maybe homesteaders, maybe they have a few chicken in the backyard, maybe they're just, you know, trying to live a more simple life. And that's always a situation where people want to be an entrepreneur. We want to figure out a way, can I yeah. have a little extra income while I'm living this simpler life? So do you have tips for us in that area? Like, you know, we can't all, if you're, if you're trying to start off something and it's a one man band or just two sisters, you don't have everything you need. You don't have all the abilities you need. So how do you run with it? How do you keep going and make a success of it? I think for us, it's been, um, it's been the, the tortoise, just slow and steady. Like don't try and grow so fast because then you're overextended. And if you don't have the sales, you're going to, you're not going to last. So just as long as I think you can keep your, your overhead and your stress down and low, then just, just go and just keep going. Because I think longevity and just people hearing your name over and over is really important, not just being a big bang and spending all this money on advertising and overextending yourself that you don't even have. So that's, I think, been our approach. And sure, we've probably grown a lot smaller and slower than than other companies, but we're okay with that. And mm-hmm. we'd rather the security of like um, low overhead, not as stressful and slower growth. So I don't know. Yeah. That's, I guess, what I would say. What do you think, Lynn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I feel like yeah. that's yeah. I think that's a great point um, because I think people are always in this comparison syndrome and they're always looking elsewhere and going, "Well, so and so, I follow them and look how successful they are." Yeah, and you think I'm never going to get so there, true. but you will. You, you just have will. to be okay with where you are, too. For sure. And then I think yeah. a lot of that's like fake anyway. So, you just don't really know how much of the success is real. So, you just got to be in your own zone and not let I all agree. that. Yeah. Cuz yeah. there is a lot where you're like, wow, do you see? I mean, we do it. For it, sure. it is. It can really influence you, but yeah. just like stay focused on, on, uh, your own goals. And we set yeah. little goals, um, which are fun. I think really helpful for moving forward and progressing and pushing our business are just little goals that we try and do throughout yeah. every time we meet one, we try and push it to the next one. And it's mm-hmm. been, that's a, a good, good point. Thing. Yeah. Goals are so important. Very yeah. good tip. So <clears throat> I really want to understand, I want to talk specifically about your beeswax candles, but before we even get into that, I want to understand what makes traditional candles toxic. I might be the last person on the face of the earth that doesn't understand, but I've just never spent time to research it. What is it about traditional candles that we need to be leery of? Yeah. Well, like when you say traditional candles, you're like probably talking paraffin. about paraffin. Like that's pretty much the Yes, that's exactly foundation. what I mean. See, I don't even know the term I want to use. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you're going to walk into your local pharmacy and pick up a candle off the shelf, it's probably not going to be good for you. But can you tell me why? Because I don't yeah. know why. Well, like their biggest ingredient is going to be paraffin. And yeah. um, paraffin has now been, there's a lot of information on it now and been tested. It 
it comes from it's a, a petroleum, petroleum byproduct so it's not even in a natural source at all mm. um it's heavily processed and treated okay. and when it's just burnt, that petroleum yeah i mean it's there's so many harmful harmful chemicals in it and so you're just burning it into your and it's been linked to different like lung diseases asthma, like cancer you know all these things that the chemicals are just putting into the air or that you're just, breathing yeah, and, and i assume into your obviously the house. flame itself is distributing those chemicals absolutely even at a greater yes. rate than if the candle was just sitting there yes. yeah yeah, yeah. when, when you burn it yeah, yeah. okay mm-hmm. but then beyond the wax which the wax is enough to not buy it <laughs> But Mm -hmm. um, are all the things they hide, you know, there's so much um, hidden that isn't even, they don't have to list on the label. Yeah. Ah. So, yeah. Okay. So is it a matter of this is a, oh, I just lost the wording. Um, They have a right to keep it to themselves because it's their own product. Yeah. So there's like a a labeling, it's called Fair Label Label and Packaging Act. Um, And so for candles, they don't require you to list like the ingredients on your label. And so it's, I mean, you'll notice like- Because it's trademark secrets is what they're arguing probably, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so a lot of candles just don't even have the ingredients listed. And so you have no idea like I mean, a lot of times they'll say fragrance or like, you know, fragrance added or fragrance oil or whatever. But under the term fragrance, a company can hide like 3000 different ingredients in that term. So, wow, you know, like, yeah, what's actually in your candle, the list could be just like so long and you just wouldn't even know. So that's not unlike them being able in the food industry to simply say that this is a natural flavor. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's very similar with that. Okay. Um, those terms, I feel like, yeah. um, in the candle industry versus the food industry. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so is there going to be a candle at my local pharmacy? Maybe. You know, the top end, the more expensive one I can find that's going to not have carcinogens? You just have to look at the labels. Yeah. I, I really feel like if a company is not hiding something... It mm-hmm. will say what's in it on the label. And um, so I would check I, yeah. a lot of times. And I think a lot of times if a candle says fragrance, like, for, you know, a lot of times people will say fragrance oil or like, um, what is the other one? Like, a scent, not essential oils, but fragrance oil. Fragrance oil would yeah. be the main one. Yeah. That they kind of almost try to like disguise as like essential oils, you know, so they'll try to make it look healthy. Interesting. And so you see the word oil and you think, oh, it's an essential oil. I know that's harmful. No. Harmless. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I mean, fragrance oil, but yeah, people use that as kind of a more healthy option to the fragrance world. Um, but that's still, it's chemically made, it's modified, it's made in a lab. It's not from a natural source, like an essential, 100% essential oil. So Okay. There's just so many ways that people can almost greenwash, I feel, as and, and that's a huge term right now. Um, you know, in the the natural crunchy um yeah. <laughs> community is greenwashing and it's just happening all over the place where people yeah. think they're buying something healthy and good and good for their families, but um so much is hidden in it. So it's unfortunate, but it's totally happens in candles. It's, yeah. I think it's kind of like when you're looking at candles too, just at the store, you know, there's like a, a bad, good, better, best. Yeah. Good, better, best, except yeah. paraffin's just not even good, but this, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't even waste. <laughs> now but does it like, have to say that it's paraffin? Does it at least have to say that? I, I feel like it has to say that, but yeah. I, I should, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah I, guess I think okay. it does have to say it's paraffin wax, but okay. it could say paraffin blend or Wax, yeah, I would think the name yeah. the name paraffin would have to be on it, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Okay, okay. But um, another big thing was soy, right? That you wanted to talk about was the soy. Yeah, soy. That's yeah, definitely like right, kind of on right now. It seems like maybe a little awareness is coming to paraffin, and so a lot of people are going to soy. Which yeah, it's a lot better, kind of better, so much better yeah. than mm-hmm. paraffin. Um, and I think like. What I see a little bit is that a lot of times I'll see soy candles and they're um, they're the same amount of money as like what we're selling our candles for. So yeah. if if you have the opportunity, beeswax is is so much better because okay. beeswax is um, comes straight. It's it's not altered. It is the only 
really natural, natural occurring occur. wax that yeah. is and um so it's just a su- in a super natural form and um and it also has the benefit of really purifying the air as well so you just get that yeah. too so if it's ever mm-hmm. like ones on the shelf and they're about the same amount of money it's definitely better to go with the beeswax over the soy but if you have a paraffin and a soy oh my goodness go with the soy absolutely so- yeah okay <laughs> Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. So guys, you just like lifted a veil. I totally get it now. I make it makes sense. Um, but when I learned a while back about the value, and here I was we were beekeepers for years and I actually didn't know this. It was just maybe a year ago that I learned the value of beeswax when you're burning it. It kind of blew my mind. I'm like, yeah. wow, of course, the wax that like our creator gave us, of course, is going to be good wax for us, but who knows? It's can you so explain that cool. to us? Maybe there's a few listeners that, that don't know this, if like I didn't. So can you explain to us sure. why beeswax is so amazing? Yeah. Beeswax, yeah, it's, it's so amazing. But um, <laughs> it's just when you burn it, so it, it emits um, negative ions when you're burning beeswax. So then it'll go into the air and cling to the positive ions, which would be like dust, mold, toxins in your air, and bring them down. And so, yeah, so it's like a natural air purifier. So I feel like I just, love it. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah. So um, on top of just being so, you know, so natural wax, it also purifies your air while you're burning your candles, which is just an added bonus for sure. <laughs> for sure. Amazing. Like why yeah. would, like you said, if you could choose anything, why would you choose anything but this candle that's right. doing this for you and cleaning your air? Um, it also, it seems to me, and I don't know, I, you could tell me if I'm wrong. It seems to me like it burns longer and just much more evenly when it's beeswax versus a soy candle. Do you find that? No, I think it might burn a little longer. Yeah. Well, because beeswax is the hardest wax. So it's a harder wax than soy, oh. anything. And that is why like, that. well, we add a little bit of coconut oil in ours because it's just so hard. So if you just have straight beeswax, you know, it doesn't, um, it doesn't, like melt to the edges as well oh, but interesting. um yeah but because it is a harder wax it takes more heat and longer heat to burn it so that is kind of why like beeswax candles typically do burn longer than your soy candles but it, i would say in a more so the beeswax pillars because when you put mm. it in a jar i don't know some i see other companies advertising their eight ounce candle is 40 hours too i've seen that so okay. ours gets around 40 hours so okay. it's Maybe more comparable in the jarred candles, but like in the pillars where it's straight beeswax, you get like 100 hours out of that. So it's a a long burn time. Wow. Yeah. That makes me excited because before we started recording, I told you guys I was so excited. You were so sweet and sent me some candles (laughs) in a package that I got yesterday. And when I unwrapped your tapers, I thought, these are too gorgeous to ever burn. They're so oh, beautiful. But you're telling you. me they really will last a lot longer than my typical, what I'm used to with a regular taper. Yeah, the tapers will last longer too, for oh, sure. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. And how they don't you, hardly drip. It's really nice. How did you make them? They're this beautiful spiral candle. How do you do that? Oh, um, the tapers we have forms for. So they are actually okay. like, they are actually pretty... Um, I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Take a little bit of time, but Uh yeah, you just have to like wick the form and then they just kind of, yeah. Put them together with either rubber bands or you wrap them just so the wax doesn't leak out and then pour the wax into the mold, let it harden. And then you can un- Kind of seat them from the mold. Okay, so the mold is two pieces. That's the way you can do it because you couldn't like pull that out with No, that's what, yeah. yeah. So you have to kind of have it two-sided almost yeah <laughs> okay well they're gorgeous and I, I <laughs> last night I'm so I'm a crazy person I went through in the course of like four hours I burned three different candles because I had to try all the different scents <laughs> oh good <laughs> and I loved them what's uh, the one cedar something oh cedar and spice I, uh, yeah. cedar and mm-hmm. spice I didn't yeah. think I would like that because I'm not like a pine person I know cedar's not pine but but okay. I really liked that one oh, and then, good. um fresh morning I have that one right here I really liked Fresh Morning. What's in this one? Oh, awesome. And this one, Balance orange. the lemon, orange, and vanilla. Yeah. Okay. See, yeah. the vanilla is what did it for me. I think. It's kind of I... like a orange creamsicle is kind of how we feel like. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Uh, it was really, really awesome. And then look at this. I mean, only people on YouTube are going to see, but it just burns so uh, evenly. 
I don't know. And so flat across the top. I just, it's a wonderful Good. candle. You guys make Thank a really you. great product. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle. I think the now, biggest thing for people too um, with our candles is if you don't burn, like if it's just short burns, like an hour here, an hour there, it doesn't have time to really let the wax pool meet out to the edges. So I think a really important like burning tip for our candles, and I think this applies to other, you know, beeswax candles too, if you're interested, is just yeah. let, making sure that burn time is enough to let that wax pool really reach the edges mm-hmm. and then yes. each burn. Because if it doesn't, it will start to go down and leave wax on the edges. And then when it tunnels, it doesn't get the airflow right and it'll it's extinguish the wick and not light. And it's just like all these problems. So just, that's what we'd like to tell people is to really let that And I love it that your packaging, I think you always probably include a note in there explaining Um, this. You have a nice little card that goes in there Yeah, and you have other tips too. Run down all the tips for us for how we can burn our beeswax candles perfectly. Yeah. That's definitely the most, like the biggest one. And trimming the wick probably. And then trimming. And let me just tell you, it's really not a heartache to have to make sure your candle burns until it gets to the edge of the wax. Yeah. That's really not hard. (laughs) You want to enjoy the the ambiance of it anyway. So let exactly. it burn and fill the room, you know, with the exactly. essential oils. You know what? Before you list off your tips, let me ask you, um, and maybe your card said this, um, is it okay once it gets to the edge and you have all liquid wax across the top, can you still keep burning it? Or do you suggest at that point you extinguish it for some reason? Oh, no, you can still okay. burn it. Yeah. So it can burn as long as you want at that point. I to, mean, they the say liquid. like just for um, the sake of of caution to not burn what do they say over four like over hours four. but that's okay, okay. it's like too okay big, i guess maybe yeah. so if i want to live life on the edge it's okay <laughs> i can burn oh, my girl, candle okay oh, girl <laughs> <laughs> okay so lydia i think i might have stopped you from telling us more tips uh, i didn't mean to interrupt you oh no just picking yeah. up the wick yeah, yeah the wick yeah you can trim it or even like we'll often just grab it and it just kind of breaks where the the dead wick yes. is and so that's mm-hmm. um that's our other main one. And how but. much do you suggest trimming it to? A quarter inch. Yeah. Okay. And then whatever, if you do it with your finger, it'll break where it needs to break. So no, like asparagus, like yes, asparagus. asparagus. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Totally. I didn't know that. I'm oh, always yes. worried when I break my, I've done this for like decades. You, I know to trim my wicks on my candles, but I'll like put my thumb on there and I'll kind of go up and down and worry, which, where should I, you're saying it will just naturally break. Yeah. Where it you just go and then it just breaks where it should break. Cause the dead part will fall off easily. And if you're uh, like doing this, you're not, that's too much. Back off. I am so glad I had you guys on. If nothing else for that fact. Right there. Oh my goodness. I love it. Oh. I'll be thinking of asparagus next time I'm doing in my wick. <laughs> well, guys, this was so much fun. I that really, I'm really thankful so that fun. you helped me understand some things. And thank you so much for the candles you sent me. And you guys, you know what, before we, before we end this, two more quick things. First of all, tell us all the products that you make. It's not just candles. And then second of all, tell us where people can find you. Awesome. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> yes. So we make body butter. We make deodorant. And when, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> On YouTube, I'm showing you guys the body butter. It's like gorgeous as well as amazing. Thank you. Um, we make tapers and pillars and then jarred candles. And we make like a skin and lip balm. And we're coming out with um, a couple other, yeah, <laughs> a couple other, uh, oh, wax melts. Oh, we yeah. do wax melts, okay. which have been really, really a neat product. And, um, I don't yeah, know what, what does that mean? Does that mean you're not, you don't have an open flame, but you're giving no, a scent to the room? Yeah, mm-hmm. It just yeah. sits right on a little warming dish instead of a okay. flame. Cause some people don't like to do a flame. Maybe it makes them nervous. And so, right. um, so but this I'm allows... assuming, are you not helping the toxic environment as much with the wax melt because you don't have the live flame? Yeah. That's Maybe? a good question, Michelle. <laughs> I know, because it's still heated. It's still heated, so really okay. still getting into the air. I just don't. I really don't okay. think it would be as much because it, it isn't as hot. So I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. We should research that. I wonder if there's research on that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I, I'm even asking. So I don't that's, know. A good, that's a good question. <laughs> so where can people find you, wonderful ladies, and your amazing mom-run small business? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, so our we have a website, so be rooted candleco.com is our website um and so anybody out of town i guess that would be 
that would be your avenue. In Prescott here, we go to the farmer's market and we're in a couple shops and, um, but yeah, I don't have to tell And you explain that on your Instagram. If somebody is local to you, they can go to your Instagram page and find the rest of the stuff too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And your Instagram Instagram. page, is it just Be Rooted? Be Rooted Candle Co. Yeah. Be Rooted Candle Co. Okay. And I'll put all those links in the show notes and thank you guys so much. This was great. Michelle, Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. It was so fun to do this. This was so fun. (laughs) Good, good. I hope I hope you weren't like nervous coming in that what kind of a crazy lady is is interviewing. (laughs) No, I mean we were nervous. Like, don't get us wrong. (laughs) But we knew you weren't crazy. (laughs) Yeah. Well, thanks again, ladies. This was fun. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Have a blessed day. You too. Okay. So there we have it. Were they not the most fun? Loved talking with them. Loved meeting them. Turns out I like the people behind the products as much as I like the products. And that's always a good thing. Be sure to go to solelyrested.com slash beef and check out that amazing offer, including free shipping. And also go to solelyrested.com slash make it and be sure to enter that giveaway and check out the pantry staple recipes that are all being stored up there and ready for you. And remember guys, it is easy to forget how blessed we are to live this life. So enjoy the simple everyday efforts. It's not easy, but it's a very good life.